Hello again, Jake Thaliber here, Safety Application Engineer with SICK. I'm based out of our Minneapolis USA headquarters. And with this short video, I'd like to go through with you the configuration software for the SafeRS. My last video, I did an unboxing of a new system, showed you what it looks like and how it connects. And this time we'll be going through a short uh, demonstration of the software with my new system. Um, if you missed the last video, I'll include a link in the description below. Um, so I hope you find this video helpful. All right, let's get started. So last video I described the SafeRS control box and briefly mentioned that the connection via micro USB goes right here. It's the top section of the box. So we're all plugged in, we're powered up, and now I can open my config software. So free configuration software from SICK that you'll want to download is called SafeRS Designer. And if I have my system powered up correctly and USB plugged in, as soon as I open the software, it will automatically scan for the device. Going, going ahead and scanning right now. Okay, so it looks like it did find the device. Uh, but you'll notice both the controller and sensor have a caution sign. That's just meaning this is a brand new device. It doesn't have a configuration stored yet. So once we complete these easy steps, we will have that. Uh, we should see green check marks there. But before we go ahead and do anything, we will have to click this login in the top right. And what it will ask us to do is set a new password. So because of the new California IoT laws, uh, and privacy security laws, we do have to intentionally create a password uh, from new devices. So I will go ahead and enter a password and repeat it to make sure I did not have any mistakes. And then a third entry just to just to log in here. Okay, after doing that, now we have full configuration access to the system. And first thing that I want to do is go into the sensor settings. So I'll go to settings, and actually it will be sensor ID nodes. And what this does is it assigns a specific node to uh, each sensor head. So if you had six sensor heads, each one of them will get a node ID, and this helps the system know uh, how they are working together and prevents uh, interference of the, the six on the system. In my case, I have one sensor head. Go ahead and hit proceed, and my default ID number is one. So I'd hit assign. Now my sensor head is being assigned sensor ID node number one. And it was successful. So if we check back to our dashboard, we have a green check on the sensor one. And now the controller is just saying, hey, I don't have a configuration passed on to me yet. So um, once we do that, that will be clear as well. So here's my configuration page. And there's a couple things that you can do here. You can set the cone width. There's two options, 50 degrees or a 110 degree opening. And then the bottom right here shows a side view. So these buttons can help with um, helping you understand your mounting. So let's do a 15 degree tilt upwards. And then let's see what that looks like. Maybe uh, a foot off the ground mounting height. And so this gives you a visual representation of your uh, cone height and how that is with respect to, to your reference plane, your floor. Um, so top view here and side view there, we can have up to a four meter safe range. And once I'm done configuring here, I can go ahead and hit apply changes. Now, if we check back to our dashboard, we have green check marks on the controller and sensor head, and we have now a running application. So simple, easy steps. We change the password. We set the sensor ID node, 
and we apply the changes, uh, config changes to the controller to save the program. So with those easy steps, we're up and running with our SafeRS system. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful.